Rooster Teeth News is brought to you today by Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus lets you watch thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere. Get an extended free trial when you visit HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth. What's up, guys? I'm Ashley Jenkins, and Star Citizen creator Chris Roberts has announced that his crowdfunded space training and combat sim has passed $35 million in funding, unlocking a new class of ship that will be added into the final game. Star Citizen doesn't have a release date yet, but it is expected sometime in late 2014 or early 2015. Robert's previous works include Wing Commander, Privateer, and Freelancer. His newest project will feature a single-player campaign, multiplayer on private servers, and an official massively multiplayer server. The game completed its initial funding goal of $2 million in October 2012 and has since blasted past every other crowdfunding record out there. Stretch goals since last October have added the build-out of a dedicated motion capture studio, additional ships, an arena combat mode, exclusive background in the corners of the universe to explore, ground-based first-person combat, salvage mechanics, intergalactic mass transit, and mining platforms. Future stretch goals revealed so far include new star systems to explore, and after that, probably whatever they can come up with to satisfy the hordes of space-hungry gamers fighting to give them all their money. Roberts is understandably proud of and overwhelmed by the show of support from the Star Citizen community. Thanking his backers for meeting the newest stretch goal, he says, You're not just rewriting the rules of how games are made and funded, but you're showing the power that a committed community has to achieve a vision that so many people said was no longer relevant. The creator of Mafia has also kicked off a new project, though this one looks more to the past than the future. Dan Vavra has founded a new development house called Warhorse Studios with Martin Klima, formerly of Alter, and they've announced their first studio project, Kingdom Come Deliverance. The open world action RPG will take place in the Holy Roman Empire during the late Middle Ages, and it'll feature horseback combat, open field sieges, and large scale battles. In a departure from most medieval RPGs, it'll feature no kind of magic or fantasy element as they plan to keep it an authentic period piece. In addition to all the combat gameplay mechanics, there will also be a relationship and reputation system, which will inform the larger story based on your actions and decisions. The game has no publisher yet, and while it has been announced for PC and next-gen consoles, they're being vague about their platform commitments since those may very well be decided by whoever does pick the game up. To balance the optimism here out with a cautionary tale, the sad story of 38 Studios just gets worse, with Rhode Island Governor Lincoln Chaffee calling the bankrupt studio's unfinished MMO, Project Copernicus, a lot of junk. And he goes on to call the lone Rhode Island grant to the studio a historically bad decision. People just panicked and gave a retired baseball player a huge amount of taxpayer money with no experience in this industry or any other businesses, he says. 38 Studios, founded by former pro baseball player Kurt Schilling, was granted a $75 million loan in 2010 to relocate the studio to Rhode Island. The studio released its first game, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, in 2012, leaning heavily on big name involvement from Todd McFarlane for character design, R.A. Salvatore for writing, and Elder Scrolls veteran Ken Rolston for gameplay design. The game failed to catch fire commercially or critically, and later that year, the studio declared bankruptcy and abandoned work on their MMO, which was to be set in the same universe. Computer and office equipment was auctioned off last autumn, and the studio's assets and IP were auctioned off earlier this month, recouping less than a million dollars in total, and Project Copernicus failed to sell. It's a messy story, right? And it gets messier in the Keith Stokes, the former director of Rhode Island's Economic Development Corporation, which granted the initial loan to the studio, alleges that Governor Chaffee intentionally blocked the studio's efforts to restructure their debt and raise money, essentially forcing the bankruptcy. The moral of the story here is probably to give Star Citizen more money so they don't have to worry about this kind of nightmare. But let's finish the day on a high note, shall we? Nintendo is having a great December, at least in Japan. Worldwide numbers aren't available yet, but Wii U sales are up there 53% from last week, with the console selling just under 75,000 units, making it the number one living room console for the week. It moved three times as many units as the PS3, and um, let's not even talk about the Xbox 360, which failed to sell even 1,000 units. 3DS sales are also up 45% with more than 180,000 sales, and it continues to dominate the handheld console market. Its sales are also bolstered by the release of Pazudora Z, Puzzle and Dragons Z, which debuted this week in the number one spot for software. PlayStation 4 won't hit Japan until February next year, and Xbox One doesn't yet have a release date there either, giving Nintendo some breathing room in its home country, and boosts in software sales for Wii Party U and Super Mario 3D World show hope for the platform as long as it delivers a strong lineup of the first-party exclusives it's known for. And that's the news today. Have you backed Star Citizen already, or is Kingdom Come more your speed? Let us know in the comments below. Then keep an eye on RoosterTeeth.com this week for a very Christmassy episode of our gaming podcast, The Patch.